welcome back to Alice Talks Football and welcome back to another video on the channel. Today's video is going to be a quick Manchester United news update and match preview ahead of the FA Cup game versus Middlesbrough tomorrow. Ralph Brannick did a press conference today where he answered quite a few questions regarding who could be playing, who could be part of the squad and about other situations going on and I'm going to be telling you exactly what he said sum up and also give you my predicted starting 11 who I assume will be playing based off what Ralph Ragnar said as well as my thoughts on a few few news topics so make sure you smash a like on the video make sure you subscribe down below if you have not already daily United content we'll be doing a watch along tomorrow for the Manchester United vs Middlesbrough game and yeah let's get into the news uh the biggest thing for me you know it's not been the best time to be a Man United fan I think we can all admit that We've almost come out of the January window. Well, we have come out of the January transfer window weaker than when we went in it. But one big bonus is Mr. Paul Labiel Pogba will be back. He's back in training and he will be back. Ralph Rannick said that Paul, Paul Pogba will be part of the group versus Middlesbrough. He might even be in the starting 11. A little bit hint, hint. Pogba could be playing tomorrow. I think they'll probably assess him tonight or tomorrow morning just to see if he can just about play which would be brilliant. I don't think he'll play the full 90 minutes, but I think he'll definitely be on the pitch whether he starts or whether he comes off the bench. Um, obviously, Ralph Rannick was then asked about a player that's been at AFCOM, a player that played very well in the Arab Cup, a player that is one of Manchester United's best up-and-coming players in the academy, Hannibal Mejbri. He said that uh, Hannibal Mejbri will be included in the Manchester United squad for tomorrow's game. Very, very interesting. Hannibal Mejbri could easily be getting some minutes he uh, will now on regularly train with the first team. You know how Alanga's been put in the squad and trains with the first team. It looks like he's doing the same with Hannibal. And maybe we'll see that Han start to see Hannibal actually play for us. He's played a lot of first team football at international level, which I think is great for experience. He's gone and got a little bit of experience. I know he hasn't played much first team football at club level, uh, but, you know, playing, you know, at AFCON, playing at the Arab Cup, it it's still a decent level. He's still got that experience and we know that he is... One of Manchester United's most exciting young talents. I think, you know, when I hear about Man United young talents, Hannibal Meshbury is one I've been heard heard of ever since we signed him. He is one of the brightest futures at Manchester United. Looks great in the academy, and I think I would love to see him get minutes. And I think possibly if we if we do ease through that game, hopefully he will. And I think it's exciting that Hannibal Meshbury will now sort of merge back in. I think you know United will try and use Pogba's return and Hannibal Meshbury as a new midfield signing because we didn't sign a CDM. But that is United. Uh, Ralph Rannick was asked a couple questions on the Greenwood situation as well, which I'm not shocked by, but I, I also am. I, I thought they would probably steer clear of that in a press conference. I have to say, um, the way Ralph Rangnick responded to those questions was really, really good at him, of him. They they asked Rangnick if he, if he felt distracted by the police investigation and he just swerved the question. He just said, in fact, we had a good normal week of training with five sessions, including today's training. Um, because it, I feel a bit bad for Ralph Ragnick because he can't comment on that. Ralph Ragnick might have seen that audio clip, might have seen, you know, the pictures and might be like, oh my God, what the hell? But it's, it is innocent till proven guilty in this country and Ralph Ragnick can't comment and can't say anything about the situation. So I feel a bit uh, annoyed that he was asked a few questions on this, but you know what it is, what it is. Ragnick said that obviously the Mason Greenman situation was a topic within the team, but... Uh, the human beings and Mason was part of the group before we had our break. It was a good week of training. We could train under normal circumstances. We look forward to tomorrow's game. Just basically saying that no, it's good week of training. Kind of avoiding the fact that they brought up Mason Greenwood and and just saying that you know it was a good training session. Uh, Ragnick um, was then asked if Greenwood did influence Manchester United's decision to keep Jesse Lingard, and Ragnick said in a way yes, but the club, the board told me they couldn't find an agreement with clubs interested in Lingard, um, and you know. Uh, Ragnick also said with the Monday close with the window closing on Monday, the board informed him that they would rather Lingard stay. Uh, so he had to kind of upset things, and that the Mason Greenwood situation probably did have a an effect on the board's choice to keep Jesse Lingard. Um, so basically, in other words, Ragnick we know was said Lingard you can go. He left it up to the board, he left it up to the Glazers. They wouldn't let Lingard go. Um, it is the board, it's the ghost's fault, and I think it's bad that they've once again undermined the manager. They, they do what they want, they undermine the manager, um, and it is what it is. And Lingard's obviously very, very frustrated with the situation. I would be frustrated if I was Lingard, but at, at the end of the day, if he wanted a permanent move, he could have gone. He wanted a low move, because in the summer he wants that sign-on fee. And uh, Lingard is, is very upset with the situation, he's very upset they didn't leave. Obviously he wants to play in the World Cup. Uh, and all of that, and he wants to get game time. Ragnick can't guarantee him that. And apparently, uh, Ragnick has given a Lingard a couple of days off. Uh, I read somewhere. I read somewhere that Ragnick had given Lingard a couple of days off just to 
make him feel better about not getting his move. I don't know if that's true. Uh, that that's what I read. I if I can find where I read that, I I will get that up on the screen, which I. It's a bit silly. I think Lingard doesn't need to be so childish about the situation. I love Lingard. I am a Lingard fan. I, I understand why he'd want to go. But at the end of the day, I think if he really wanted to go that badly, he could have got a permanent move. You know, it is what it is. Um, and also, I want to give you my predicted lineup for tomorrow's game. We know Cavani won't be available. We know Lindelof won't be available. So my predicted lineup, I've gone with Henderson in goal. It is an FA Cup game. I'm sure he'll rest the hair. Wan Bissaka and Shaw as fullbacks in the FA Cup game. Lots of rotation. They've not played much lately. Maguire and Varane because there will be no Bailly. There will be no Lindelof. Um, and I don't think we'll play Phil Jones. I've gone with Mook, Fred and Bruno as a midfield three. However, I could see Matic, Pogba, Bruno. Uh, I, I, I could see that. But I've gone with Paul Pogba to start on the left. Ronaldo up top and Rashford on the right-hand side with Sancho on the bench. But we might even see Sancho on the right-hand side. But um, I just wanted to say that that is my predicted lineup for tomorrow's game. Please do let... Me know your lineup down below, of course, as well. It'll be really interesting to see your predicted lineup. I think we'll see something like that. But I will say, I think the main the main thing I'm excited for tomorrow is I really, really, really hope that we do see Hannibal Mejbri get some minutes. Also, one last story. Um, this is regarding the Mason Greenwood Harriet situation. So if anyone's not comfortable with that, click off. I've just put this one at the end. Um, and that is that Harriet, the brave girl, obviously who was the victim of this situation, has finally sort of spoken out on social media. She posted on Instagram saying that she was grateful to everyone that has sent messages of support and encouragement. She says, thank you. The last few days have been very difficult and she'll be taking a break from social media for a while uh, while the police make their investigations. So she has spoken up. Um, you know, I don't want to talk too much on the Greenwood situation. It's just now up to the police to make the investigation. But uh, my thoughts with her. I hope she's okay. Uh, I hope that she's getting support she needs. And yeah. Thank you for watching today's video. Please do smash a like on the video if you have not already. Of course, subscribe down below if you're new. Share the video. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.